Hello everyone, it's Sim here from The Fusing Shop. In this video, I'm going to be going over the basic uh, torch setup that I have here. So let's jump right in and get it going. Actually, I was just kidding about jumping right in. First, I'd like to showcase um, some glasswork from Mike McCown. He made this cool hammerhead shark and this awesome uh, spiral pendant. Excellent job, Mike. This is really a fantastic piece of artwork. And I would like to give a plug to my website while I'm at it. Uh, fusingshop.com slash shop. You could purchase some of the glassware that you see me making videos. And I also do custom work as well. So let me know what you guys want. And I'm happy to ship it to you. So we're going to take a walk down the line here. And I'm going to flip the camera around. And mind all the disastrous mess that I have here. I am currently redoing the shop. Um, so everything is all over the place. I'm getting some new machinery in here and I'm making space for it. So don't judge the setup by what you see right now. All right. So. Uh, here we are. I have uh, for the oxygen. I use a K tank, and this K tank goes um, into a regulator, and then it goes. This is the regulator right here, which regulates the pressure, and then it goes into your flashback arrestor, which is right here, and then it feeds um, into my manifold, which I'll show you in a moment. And for the fuel side of the equation. I just use a plain old little barbecue protein, propane tank. I think this is a 10 pound tank. And the same setup as the oxygen tank. You have the uh, propane that goes into the regulator to regulate the pressure. That goes into your flashback arrestor to prevent flashbacks. And then into your hose which again will go to the manifold. And let's take a quick look at what that looks like. Okay, here is my manifold. It is um, feeding most of my, actually all of my torches and my lathe and my mini torches. And it just has the two uh, lines that come in and then the lines that go out. And this can be, uh, hold a couple more torches, but uh, it's really at capacity right now. So right now I have five torches or mini torches or the lathe or whatever all hooked up to it. So it is pretty full, filled up. And this is by uh, Covington. I'm not sure if you can see that. Hold on one second. Uh, here we go. Now you can see it. This is by Covington Engineering. And they make really good stuff. So highly recommended. It actually, uh, you can get it with all the fittings in it, depending on how much you need. And they all come like pre-taped and assembled in there. Of course, you want to check for leaks after you're done hooking everything up. Okay, so uh, everything just comes out of the manifold now. So anything that's feeding the torch is the next place in line is either the torch or the mini torch that I have underneath here that are hanging out. Uh, I also have the same thing going on with the lead where this is all fed off the manifold. So if you have multiple torches, If you have multiple torches or multiple pieces of equipment that all need to be um, supplied with fuel and oxygen, then you need some kind of either a splitter or a manifold. If you are setting up your shop, make sure you have plenty of um, clamps. These are hose clamps right here. And these hold um, the fittings together. These are barb fittings underneath here and that's why they have clamps. A lot of hoses have these uh, threaded adapters on the end which are great. Since I'm using a GTT torch it has two burners on it. It has the inner fire and the outer one. Um, so it has two sets of hoses to feed each one and I have that split off in a Y and the propane feeds into these two and the oxygen feeds into these two back here. And again, that just feeds my torch right here. And for the mini torches that I have, they're just, again, fed into the manifold. And, um, and they're just directly connected in there. And everything works great. So this is really cool, fun setup. Uh, and 
as a glass blower, you do need the didymium glasses. Very important to protect your eyes from the sodium flare. You do not want to blow glass without uh, eye protection. Next thing is your ventilation system. Uh, I have this giant hole here that I'm sure you've seen in all my videos. And this, I think, is an 8-inch duct. And it's connected to the fan right here. And this fan will suck air out of this area right here. So it is an output fan, which, you know, sucks the air out up and out you could check out the smoke bomb video to see to see it in action and it has a uh, speed controller on it which is really really awesome because uh, at maximum speed this thing can be pretty loud so and that is vented out the roof of my shop okay uh, and a note about the glasses is they do come in different shades and different colors. So this one, uh, I forgot which grade this one is. Um, shoot. But these are actually much darker than the Philips Didymium here. Uh, so if you're working with color that burns really bright, like these are really, really great to have. Okay. The last thing that you're going to need, well, maybe not the last thing. Another thing you're going to need is a good uh, carbide knife to score and snap your glass. And these are great for anything. Um, I think I do like 25 millimeter tubing with this with no problem. And it has just a flat blade here. It's not really, it's not going to cut you, but this all, all it does is etch the glass and make a little score mark in the glass so we can snap it. A uh, quick demo what that looks like. Let me just go get my tripod. Here I have a standard 10 millimeter rod. And to use this knife, you just put the edge here, put your thumb back here, and you just give a little turn, and you could hear like a little scratch form. And you should be able to see it if I could get it in focus. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, there's a little scratch right here, right here on the glass. And all that you need to do to break that is, you know, you take a drop of water and you wet it. Just a little drop of water, wet it, and uh, snap it away from you, and you're good to go. Okay, next uh, item, you the only thing you're going to need is glass, of course. <laughs> Colored glass or tubing or rods, depending on whatever you want to make. And then tools. So uh, I highly recommend getting a bunch of tweezers. I use these for so many different things. Graphite reamer, very helpful. Uh, graphite paddles or just pieces of graphite to have around, also super helpful. If you're gonna make marbles, get a marble mold. Um, if you're gonna be doing like hollow, work and like pipes and stuff you need claw grabbers to uh, be able to like take off um, you know tubing they open up like this and then uh, say for example if you're using a piece like this if you're making something like this and you have um, you want a flame cut here you grab this with your claw grabbers if you didn't want to like put another punty on there you tighten the screw down and then you can uh, use this as, as like a punty. Okay. Uh, just loosen the screw and just pop it out. Another tool that I like that um, I find super helpful is a V-blade, which is this right here. And I use this for like making necks or if I want to, you know, make a sharp line in the glass to break something off later. These are really helpful for that. And mine is brass, which uh, they come in different materials. I don't think it makes a huge difference which one you get. But, uh, let me see what else. Oh, yes, of course. And you, if you're doing hollow work, a blow hose is very important to have. They are very inexpensive to get. You get these from Mountain Glass. Um, you get the 
kit. It usually comes with the mouthpiece, the hose. I think the swivel, which is this piece here, um, is separate. And then you could get these like spark plug looking pieces uh, that attach onto the end here separately. And this is so you could rotate the glass while you um, puff air into it. So very, very important if you're going to be doing hollow work to have a blow hose on hand. Um, and stoppers and plugs are also uh, great to have. Again, for hollow work, you see in other videos where I'll use an earplug to uh, plug up the end of a tube. Uh, this way I could pressurize this tube and blow a bubble or, um, you know, whatever I need to do with it. So earplugs are another great glass blowing tool. Just get any one at your local drugstore. That works for you. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, yes. Rod rest. This uh, metal piece right here. Actually, let me bring you to the other one because that one's got much less stuff on it. So a rod rest, you want to have a tool to put your rods down. This way you can see, um, you know, glass safety 101 is you always want to keep the hot end of your glass facing away from you. So when you have a rod rest, it's very easy. You just put it down. It's very easy to pick up off the table. So definitely these things are dirt cheap, like a couple bucks. Just get one. You'll have it forever. Um, another thing you need is like a quelching cup and this I just use like an old soup jar dump some water in it and boom throw all your hot glass in there or if you need to like crack off uh, punties and stuff also they are great if you're going to be working with bigger pieces get one of these tapered stopper sets this has a core that goes in the middle and it could you know you could use it for various size tubing which is really fantastic this way you don't have to get 20 different snappers of different sizes. This this thing, you know, works for so many different sizes, uh, pieces of tubing and everything. So also available at Mountain Glass. It is awesome. I use it a ton when I use the lathe. Next item is welding gloves. These are fantastic for um, dealing with hot glass. They are not good for like handling glass. I think these, this pair was like 13 bucks. Uh, but for like putting and taking things in and out of the kiln, you will not be able to rotate the glass with these gloves. They're just like too thick and dense to actually get a good hold on the glass and actually turn it. But they are amazingly great for high heat. So um, I dropped someone's, you know, piece of glasswork on the floor the other day. And uh, before it broke or shattered, I, you know, just quickly grabbed it off the floor with one of this, this glove and threw it in the kiln and um, yeah, uh, take your hand out of the glove because it will absorb some heat. But these are great for uh, when you have to put things in and out of the kiln, highly recommended. These are by uh, Radnor and there's, there's the number and the company if you want to get the same pair. Uh, another thing I recommend is having some kind of storage system for your glass. Uh, originally, I had my glass stored in this little cubby unit whoops hold on and this little cubby unit but I'm actually making room for a new piece of equipment and I have moved them into these uh, PVC tubes which has made it super super easy for me to organize and find all the different you know glass that I have and last thing on your list for a glass blowing setup is to get a kiln to make sure you can preserve and save your work and this is a Paragon kiln. I forgot which one this is. It's one of the smaller ones. It's not gigantic. I don't make a lot of big stuff, so I can get away with having this uh, smaller size kiln with the smaller firebox. But it does have the uh, little drawer here for punties, so you can take your punties in and out, which is very convenient if you do that kind of stuff. Um, and it, you know, closes up all the way when there's nothing in there. But Anyway, I think that's it for the setup. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I love hearing your feedback and thoughts and um, what other information you might find helpful. Uh, so don't be bashful and just reach out with any kind of questions. And I'll see you guys in the next video.